Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Hebrews. Hebrews. When you get the title of the book, Hebrews is a hard book, but it makes it a little easier. Hebrews 10. For the law, not church, having a shadow of good things to come, so that law will show you Jesus Christ it will show you God's love it will show you what man can't do the law you couldn't be saved the man could not do anything and not the very image of things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect so look at it somebody tries to put you under the law Hebrews 10 1 the people that were under the law every year and yet they were not perfect and when they died if they did die in righteousness they went to Abraham's bosom unto Christ suffered died and was buried and arose again according to scripture for then would they have not ceased to be offered the Old Testament the offerings the, the tabernacle stopped at the finished work of Jesus Christ when he said it is finished that's it but we'll be coming to a time where the law is coming back the sacrifice is coming back the temple's coming back the time of Jacob's trouble we need to get that now Hebrews tribulation because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin and we looked at that uh, in verse 14 of chapter 9. There was another place talking about that conscience. Verse 9. You could bring your sacrifice, your blood, your gifts, your, your tithes to the priest, to the tabernacle like you're supposed to, to the temple. But that still did not erase the guilt of your conscience. Whereas today if Satan comes to you, hey, what about that sin you've done? Hey, if it's under the blood, God doesn't remember it. 1 John 1 9. Under the blood of Jesus Christ, it's gone. It's washed. Got to get that because we're going to come to a very difficult passage pretty soon that causes much conflict. Well, it could cause conflict. So Jesus Christ not only removes sins, but he removes that conscience of the sin, the guilt. But in those sacrifices, Old Testament, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. You know, you come back and you offer, and you come back and you offer every year. You got to bring a cow, you got to bring a ram, you got to bring a turtle dove, you got to remember what you were supposed to bring. Not with Jesus Christ. You come to God with one offering, the blood of Jesus Christ. You don't need to look at a calendar. You don't need to, oh, is, it, is, it, is it barley? Is it turtle doves? Is it, it's Jesus for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin That's why they went to Abraham's bosom but the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ the Lamb of God which take away the sin in the world that will finish wherefore when he Jesus cometh into the world he says, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not. 
but a body hast thou prepared me. In the womb, the virgin birth, Mary did not conceive God. She conceived a body that would be nailed to the cross and put in a tomb. Upon that body, then the blood of that body, Acts 20, 28, the blood of God would wash away our sins that bulls and goats would not ever be able to do. So Jesus Christ was body, 100% man, and he was 100% God. In burnt offerings, that's what they did, and sacrifices for sin, thou hast no pleasure. Now how you like that today? Don't bring, bull, don't bring the blood of animals today. God has no pleasure in that anymore. It has been finished by Jesus Christ. Well, you say, Stila, you say in the tribulation, the, tri the temple's coming back, the wall's coming back, the sacrifices are coming back. Yeah, you got to do that all in Jesus Christ. That time of Jacob's trouble is, is the time when Israel has done totally wrong against Jesus, had crucified Jesus, had rejected Jesus. And has tried to stop the Bible and the preaching of Jesus Christ throughout the book of Acts. They've got to be punished for that for that sin of trying to hinder Jesus Christ to the people. And yet, in the tribulation period, you're going to need that sacrifice. You're going to need that temple. But in the end of that period, you're going to need Jesus Christ coming. Because the one that's heading the whole thing in the tribulation period is not your Messiah. Matter of fact, he'll sit down and drink your blood. And burn offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast no pleasure. Now what about offering sacrifices not for sin, but because you love God? First Corinthians, I believe it is, Paul says, God loves a cheerful giver. If you bring an offering and sacrifices for God because you love him, You go to God and say, you know, God, I'm going to give you this can of beer. I am never going to touch a beer again. I am giving that completely up. I am going to sacrifice that, my sin, for you. No more. God said, I love that. Lord God, I, I got in my pocket, I pulled $10.35.36. I'm just going to give that to you, not for sin, because I love you, Lord. I want to give it to you. I want to give it to me, this preacher, or to this missionary that's visited us. Whatever. God loves that. But offerings and sacrifices, well, here, I'm going to do this because my sin. I'm going to walk old ladies across the street for my sin. I'm going to eat bread and wine for my sin. I'm going to sell magazines for, for sin. No. I'm going to multiple wives and have babies for sin. No. God has no pleasure in that. Then said I, God, Jesus Christ, lo I, Jesus Christ, come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O God. So what did Jesus say when he prayed in that garden? He said, Father, this cup could pass from me. Nevertheless, thy will. The will of God for Jesus Christ was to take man's sin. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. That was the will of God for Jesus Christ upon that cross. Above, when he said, Sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not. Neither has pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. There's the law again. Who's the law? Who is the law for? Hebrews. Who brought sacrifices and animals and barley and cakes and dough and Hebrews? God says, Hebrews 10, I'm done with that. I don't want it no more. I want my son as your sin atonement. Not my son. I am not pleased. I'm not going to have pleasure in it. It will not be accepted. That's a big, pretty big statement for God. But Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Then said he, God, lo, I, Jesus, come to do thy will, O God. That's in the garden. Scripture. 
He take away the first, Old Testament, that he may establish the second, that's the testaments. He got rid of that testament that I, I, Moses, I think, was the, the blood of bulls and calves. Started the first Old Testament. I mean, I didn't mean the first Old Testament. I mean, there's a second Old Testament. I mean, the first testament, the Old Testament. Now, the second is sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I gave you the, the references last night in the Gospels when Christ gave up the ghost and died. That is the second advent. That is the New Testament. By the which, will, will, that is God's will we just mentioned. That established the second testament, the blood of Jesus Christ. That is the will of God. We are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Can you please get that verse before we get in any more trouble? The, blood, the body, the sacrifice upon the cross. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That was God's will sacrifice for my sins. But I'm not talking about me. Who am I talking to? Let's get it right now. Hebrews. A Hebrew cannot say, God, here's my billy goat for sin. God, I'm going to chop him up. I'm going to do exactly what Leviticus says with the ox. With the heifer, whatever, Lord, whatever that, that book of Leviticus says, I'm going to do it right now, 2017. And God's up and saying, that's no pleasure. That's not acceptable. Sorry. Talking to a Hebrew. A Hebrew will go back to the Old Testament and say, God, look what I'm doing. According to the law. And God says, no. No. Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And yes, for me. For me, that verse would be Jesus Christ. If I apply it to me as a Christian, it is the blood atonement, the sacrifice of that cross, Jesus Christ, that I am saved forever and nothing I could do. Not of works, at least any man could boast. You ever read the Old Testament where it says about David and Solomon? You ever see how many sacrifices, that one sacrifice that Solomon brought to, to God one time, a thousand, whatever it was? I'm lucky if I can afford one cow. Solomon, hey, look at the thousand I brought. What'd you bring? I just bought one. Oh, I know what I brought. I brought the Lamb of God. How's that? So, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to apply this book to, to Christians because it's Hebrew. You can make applications, but let's look at Hebrews so we don't get in any trouble. By the which, verse 10, we were, we, yeah, by which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Now the writer of Hebrews is saying, we are, we that are saved are sanctified. You that believe on Jesus Christ, that is the only way you can be sanctified through God. That's the will of God. There's no more animals. And every priest, there we go, here we go with the priest again, they would recognize that, Aaron, Levite, standeth daily. What was Eli doing sitting? The Bible says he sat down. Every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. That priest... He get up, go to the altar. Then he go over to here to wash. Then he set out the bread. He fix the candles. He fill with oil. He go in there, burn incense. The high, the high priest go in there once a year for his sins. Come out, go back in for the sins of the people. They go back to the altar. They go back and wash. They go back to the altar. They go back and wash every single day, every single day, every single day. And God says, "What did he say? It can never take away sin." So when that idiot gets up there at the altar and opens up the box and takes Jesus out and gives him about his book of bunkers and, and magic spells in, in the name of Jesus, this is now the body and bread of Jesus Christ for our Mass on Saturday, our Mass on Sunday, our Mass on Monday, our Mass on Good Friday, our Mass on Christmas, whatever it is. That cannot take away your sins. What can wash me of my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
Imagine these churches that, that go under the law. They don't sing that song. Nothing but the blood of goats and bulls. You can't sing that because the Bible says, verse 4, no. But this man, Jesus Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, perfection. Now let's get this. We're talking about Hebrews. We are looking at there is only one way for them Hebrews. It's no more the Old Testament. It is no more. I gotta, I gotta get this because we're gonna run in trouble. It is one sacrifice. It's not of animals. It's not of priests, but the high priest ordained and an oath of God, Jesus Christ. The nine chapters we read so far. It is only by Jesus Christ, the will of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. What reference is that? That's the second advent. That is when Jesus Christ gets the honor and glory over all. And those that all oppose him will end up in a lake of fire. And there will still be enemies, sinners in the millennium. Christ is king on David's throne. He'll take care of them. That's not a church. That's not the church age today. Christ does not have his enemies under his footstool today. Right now, for by one offering he Jesus hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Get that. So talking to Hebrews again. You want sanctification, you want to go to heaven, you want to please God, you want to be saved. It is that one sacrifice, not that what the priest did in the Old Testament. It's not that daily thing anymore. It's not that one time of year no more. Forget it, Hebrews. That's done. That's gone. It's a new thing. It's a New Testament. It is one offering, not multiple offerings for the high priest. We are trying to show the Hebrews it is no more the law and the work of that priest. That's important. Very important. Because a Jew would get that hard because am I not supposed to go to Jerusalem three times a year? No more. You don't have to go to the Holy Land to be saved. I was in Waterford, Connecticut when I got saved. What is Waterford, Connecticut? That's where Jesus Christ came down from heaven, came down and came into me. The Holy Spirit came into me and gave me light on Calvary. I don't have to go to Jerusalem. I don't have to do that. I went to Calvary, and I was not physically at Calvary. I'm excited because this is all great. For by one offering he has perfected forever, forever, them that are sanctified, forever. Do you believe that saved people that are sanctified, Jesus, are saved forever? Do you believe that? We're going to come into trouble pretty soon. Wherefore, the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he has said before. Now look at that. When you preach the gospel, who is speaking? The Holy Ghost. When I preach on the street and I open up John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish have everlasting life. When I start that and everything I do about Jesus Christ, everything I do about the lost man going to hell, that he can believe on Jesus Christ and be saved. That is the Holy Ghost using me witnessing to those lost people. Men wrote the Bible, yet yeah, the Holy Spirit can use my mouth in inspiration to preach. It's a marvelous work what the Holy Ghost does. He's a comforter. This is the covenant that I will make with them, Hebrews, one of the Hebrews, after those days. Now, what would after those days be? <laughs> after those days, after the tribulation period, after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts. Millennium. Now please get where we're at now. We are at the end of the tribulation period. Jesus has come. He is putting into God's people a new covenant. The law in their heart, not stone. And in their minds will I write them. That has not happened today in the church age. It's not going to happen in the tribulation period. Because there will be Jews that go to hell in the tribulation period. They will get that mark just to make business. Sorry to say. 
and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now that can happen in the church age. It can, yes. But after those days, remember I gave you some verses before, which we're going to look at a little bit later, that those that endure to the end, that's not church age. Don't go running to Matthew with that. People will say those that endure in the end in Matthew, they apply that to the church, and that has nothing to do with the church. And if you apply Matthew to the church, you're going to follow up in Hebrew. If you're going to follow up in Hebrew, it's because you misapplied Matthew, written to Jews, to a Jewish king of David for a Jewish people. The book is called Hebrews. Now we're now where remission of those is, there is no more offering for sin. So what are those sacrifices in the millennium? It's not it's not for sin. It's for praise and honor Jesus Christ. There he is. There is the Messiah. He, there is no sin offering when you look at Ezekiel. The end of the chapter of Ezekiel. That sin offering is sitting on the throne of David's throne. Now it's joy and peace. Look what happened. God has removed the sin and the iniquities off the people of Israel as a nation as a corporate that's not today having therefore brethren talking to Jews Hebrews boldness to enter into the holy holiest by the blood of Jesus now what would that be to the Jew the most holy place don't walk in there with that blood of the high priest and the blood of the atonement walk in with the blood of Jesus now he's witnessing to the Hebrews again this is would be current of 64 AD this would be also current for the Jews in the tribulation and in the millennium hey you need the blood of Jesus Christ with that veil is gone Christ ripped that veil that holy place in the holiest place becomes one place there's no more two rooms by Jesus. You've got God on the throne with the cherubim. You've got the, the light of the Holy Spirit, the olive oil. You've got the incense altar offering prayer to God. You've got the six and six loaves of the bread of God. And you can, at that table, read by the Holy Spirit and pray by the incense altar and be in full fellowship with God with no veil in the way. That's the writer said, hey, Hebrews. I got an idea for you. This is what message I'm going to preach to you. Go in that temple by the blood of Jesus Christ. And you know it's not the physical temple that's there in Jerusalem. Because they would not allow these people to go in there. It was forbidden. John the Baptist's father got all upset when Gabriel showed up. Oh, what are you doing here? We're going to be both dead. Asa went in there to offer incense to God. He came out with leprosy. Nahab and Abihu went in there, struck a match or something that was not God, and then boom, they were fluming and smoking. So this has got to be the, the heavenly, heavenly, holy, holy. By a new and living way, forget the law. It's by Jesus Christ. Which he, Jesus, has consecrated for us Jews through the veil. That is to say... His flesh. So that shows you right there. We're not talking about the temple temple. We're talking about the passage through Jesus Christ. And when you've got Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can walk not into that earthly temple, but you can walk into the heavenly of heavenly temples. We've already seen that we are seated in heavenly place. You can walk to God as a Jew, as a Hebrew, by Jesus Christ saying, I've got a prayer. i got... You have access. Not a temple made by hands we read, but by a temple fashioned by God. How's that? How's that for a promise? And yes, we can apply this to Christians. We are seated in heavenly places. My body has not made it yet, but I am there. But back to the Hebrews. Having a high priest over the house of God. 
So there's no more sons of Aaron. The sons of Aaron now for the high priest is the son of God. And no one's going to kill him. And he's not going to die. And he's going to rest as the high priest forever and ever. So in eternity, right into what is this book called again? Hebrews. Who is going to be the Hebrews high priest? Jesus Christ. Let us draw near with a true heart. That matches Romans 10, 9 and 10. You've got to come with a proper heart. In full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, there's that conscience again, and our bodies washed with pure water. Now that was the, that was the movement in the temple. They had the altar, of, the, the, the uh, brazen water where they washed. They would the priests would go and wash their bodies there after they did sacrifices at the labor but you can be a better wash and this is not baptism but you can be washed by the word of god you can come clean by god this bible says that this thing in my life is guilt it's sin i come to the blood of jesus christ first john 1 9 first he is faithful and just to wash us of our sins did you get that you get that hope you got that let us hold fast. That means grip it. Grip it like a fat person grabbing a, a chocolate bar. Hold fast. Don't let it go. Like a dog with a bone. <laughs> the profession of our faith, Jesus Christ, without wavering. For he is faithful that promise. All right, so wavering. Yes, Christians do waver. Hold fast. Don't lose it. Because God is faithful. You may not be faithful, but God is faithful. He is coming. It may not have been today. It may not have been yesterday, but he's coming. It may not be in your time like Paul and the people who have been reading about in, in the Gospels and the, in the epistles to the church, but he is coming. He promised he's coming. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good work. Now we saw that in Thessalonians. When I talk about the rapture, remember it said comfort one another with these words. Oh, I'm so tired. I want to give up. I want to quit. No, listen. The rapture may happen. It's going to happen. Even if you die, the rapture is going to happen. Maybe he'll come today. Maybe all our hardships will comfort one another. Now, this we can apply this to Christian. But let's bring it back to the Hebrews again. What one time will be in Jewish future? That a Jew would need more comfort and more patience and more to provoke to keep going and not give up. The tribulation period. Don't receive that mark. You know we're not supposed to receive that mark. I know that guy is after us. I know he's ready to kill us. But the 144,000 is pre. We, there is help from God coming. They cried in Exodus. Oh God, we're being rigor treated. God, he hates us. And God told Moses, I hear them. And one day God's going to send a prophet like unto Moses to get those Jews out of the hands of Satan, Pharaoh. So Exodus is going to happen again. The, the Hebrews are going to have, hey, God took care of us in Exodus. He'll take care of us now. Keep going. Don't give up. Hebrews. Time of Jacob's trouble. Don't give up. Please, don't give up. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and do good works. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much more as we see the day approaching. Now we can say that's the rapture. Okay? I don't think you do harm to the text if you say rapture. But what is the name of the book? Hebrews. What day would be coming for them? The Messiah. Moses. A type of Moses. He's coming. He, come on, man. Don't you remember Exodus? Don't you remember man, they had heart varnish? But that guy, that, that prophet Moses is coming. Stick it out, please. Stick it out. Don't get that mark. For that mark for the Jews is complete damnation. So stick together Jews in the tribulation, help each other, love each other. Yes, you can apply this for the church. 
But for the Jews, they need each other's help. Because nobody, there's going to be very few nations that are going to help them. Everybody else is going to be against them. If you think you got the whole world against you, you try being a Jew under Satan's rule in Jacob's trouble. Now, all right, so not for Satan's day approach, let's say that's the church age. All right, trouble. For if we sin willfully, have you ever sinned willfully? Have you ever gone to church faithfully and sinned willfully? After that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice of sins. <gasps> I go to church and I commit a sin because I wanted to do it. Now I can't have no more sacrifice for sins. I'm damn going down. Oh my God. Who's it for? Hebrews. Hebrews. That has nothing to do with the church age. And Christians will fall by that verse. These are Hebrews in the tribulation period. They have heard the truth. They have heard what is supposed to be done for them. And they go on to sin will willingly. What would that willingly see, sin be in the tribulation period? The mark. They've got to receive what they want to buy. So you, the Bible says in Revelation, I'm going to misquote this, I'm sorry, Lord. But you can't do nothing without that mark. You can't beat the computer. You can't hide out. The Bible says there will be some nations that's going to help them. But there are going to be some Hebrews that are going to say, I'll take that mark. I don't care. I want to live. But a certain fearful looking for the judgment and the fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. Those that rejected the Jews will go to the same place that Hebrews sin willfully in the tribulation period. You're going to end up in the same place as your enemies. Fiery, lake of fire. He that despised Moses' law. Tribulation, not church aid. That's the danger you get. You put the law in the church because then now if you put the law in the church, verse 26 would fall. Okay, you can lose your soul. And plenty of scriptures say you can't. Paul says no, neither uh, powers and uh, can separate from the love of God. So either Hebrews 10, 26 is a contradiction of what Paul said or what Paul says contradicts Hebrews. It doesn't. Who is it written to? Is it written to Jews? Is it written to Christians? Or is it written to Gentiles? This is written to, it tells you, Hebrews. Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. You needed two or three witnesses in order to be brought before the law court of the law. It said, if one person said, oh, I saw him do it, you can't try them. Well, if you're walking around with a mark on your forehead or your right hand, yeah, the right, yeah, I can't believe it is. You're going to have plenty of people to witness to you, aren't you? That mark is going to stand out. Yeah, I see. He's got the mark. Your own body is going to record that mark. How much sore punishment? Suppose he, suppose, you know, think about this. Shall he be thought worthy who has trotted underfoot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant new covenant wherein he was sanctified a holy an unholy thing and has done and has done despite unto the spirit of grace there was no regard to the gospel the gospel was preached to him that jesus is that new offering jesus is the way the truth and the life jesus needs to be believed on for you to be saved yeah i don't want that Thank you, me. We got the sacrifices back. That's good enough. That's what a lot of those Jews are going to think. This sacrifice is good enough. Our fathers did it, did it, didn't they? So, outright, verse 26, is someone who's outright rejected the, the new way of Jesus Christ, the blood atonement. The willfully sinning is, hey, you've heard the, what, and for the tribulation, it would be the 144,000. You've heard them preach. You rejected him, and then you go do something willingly. It's not church aid. And if it was church aid, you believed on Jesus Christ, nothing will separate you from the love of God, no matter what things you do. And I'm not giving you license to do it. But 1 John 1 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. 
And if we say we not sin, we make him a liar. These are Hebrews in the tribulation period. Thank God, aren't you glad God's calling you out before the tribulation? How would you like to fall in this mess? If the church did go in the, in the tribulation period, all right, verse 26 can apply to it. But I'm out of here. And we'll mention another name coming up in a few minutes. We'll go hear more about it. So, verse 30. For we know him, Jesus, that has said, Vengeance belongs unto me, I will recompense. So hold your place there. Let's go to John 3.36 real quick. Now this one, we have to do scripture with scripture. We can't leave this alone. John 3.36. I know my family hears this every week. So John 3.36. Let's see what John the Baptist said, who said, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Let me get all right. John 3 36. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. Have you believed on the Son? Then you got everlasting life. You don't need to worry. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abided upon him. Vengeance on those that rejected Jesus Christ. Verse 29. Vengeance belong unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord Jehovah. And again, the Lord shall judge his Hebrews people. And that will be at the great white throne judgment. The books are open. If your name was found in the land's book of life, you did not go into in the lake of fire. You went where your dispensation. And if we're talking about the tribulation period. You can't say his people is a church because we're gone. We're being judged. Let me say, because I don't know how long it's going to be. We will be judged sometime after the rapture itself in the judgment seat of Christ. Now, whether it takes us seven years, I don't know. While we've been raptured and judged, Jacob's trouble will be going on. The people haven't been judged yet. They're being punished. And there will be Jews, Hebrews, and tribulation that will receive the mark. They will be judged. There will be Jews in the tribulation that will reject the Messiah and the 144,000. They will be judged. Now the nations will be judged like, how did you treat my people? Did you visit them when they are in prison? You did? All right, come into the millennium. Did you feed them? They, they could not receive the mark. I sent you to help them. Yeah, we fed them. All right, you go into the millennium. Did you uh, visit my sick brethren, the Jews? No. I wanted them dead. Vengeance is mine. You go off in the lake of fire. Burn. Burn, baby. Burn for not taking care of my people. Judgment. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Now, can you say that as a Christian? According to what we read about the judgment seat of Christ. If you were a total rotten Christian, worthless, and, and just pathetic, what was the worst thing that could happen to you at the judgment seat of Christ? Wood, hay, or stubble gets... That's it. Your works get burned, not you. I mean, the worst thing God could do a Christian is he takes you home early. That ain't bad. That's all right, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Call everybody home. But the fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God, this is talking about judgment. Because if we go back to the previous chapter, let's check the chapter, verse 9, verse 27. As his point unto men wants to die, but after this, the judgment. Those people at the Great White Throne Judgment, if their name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, they will face an angry, vengeful, wicked, angrily. I didn't mean to say wicked. It's just it's one of those words that just comes out when you're angry and all. Take away that, just an angry, judging God. Imagine them going before God and say, Judge not Lee. Oh, you're going to flow fire in your throat. And if those nations don't help those Jews, they're burnt up. They're goats. But call to remembrance the former days in which, after you were illuminated, 
ye endure a great fight of affliction from the Jews. You had that light. You heard. Then you became afflicted. Yeah, this can go for the Jews in the, in the, in the, the gospel. I mean, the gospel. In the book of Acts. They were afflicted. Wait till they get afflicted in, in time of Jacob's trouble. Partially, while ye were made a glazing stock, both by reproaches and affliction, and partially, while ye became the companions of them that were so used, you will be rejected in the tribulation period for your stand on God rightfully, Jesus Christ, and doing what you're supposed to by all people. Except for when you got over here, let us consider one another to vote unto love and to go. Those Jews that are willing to help you and love you and want to do right, they're going to help you. Everybody else but those nations that will help the Jew, they're going to be glazing stocks, they're going to be reproaches, they're going to be afflicted, they're going to be, have a reward put on their neck. I said neck. Partially while you become companions of them that were so used. They're going to be, there are some people that you're going to know that already became, already were grazed and stuff. They probably were killed, beheaded. And John says, I've seen the souls of them beheaded for the word of God. So there's going to be death. There's going to be uh, ridicule. There's going to be afflictions. There's going to be just. For ye had compassion of me in my bonds. Now. There we go. There's Paul. There he is. Here's the writer of Hebrew. And took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and enduring substance. All right. Spoiling goods, plundered or confiscated. People, you did right. You helped a Jew in bonds. And you lost your property. You lost your fame. You were, became a gazing stock. And Luke 12, 33, Jesus said. I'm, I'm going to misquote this one. He said, treasures in heaven or what? Or on earth where robbers can steal? Make it treasures in heaven. Or on earth you can have robbers steal. You run verse 34 back to Luke. 1233 and that's a cross reference Jews are going if they want to do right in the tribulation period are going to have their stuff stolen confiscated plundered in the Bible in the Old Testament it's called spoiling so and so with it in my bonds if it's Paul if this is Paul, if the people, we didn't we read all the people that helped Paul in his ministry? So with 26, for if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of truth, there remains no more. You think those people that helped Paul sin willfully in their life? We all do. Paul called himself the chief of sinners. So that's not Paul and that's not the Christians of the book of Acts. These are people who are under the law and they're helping each other out. And there may be even reference to the good nations that are helping the Jews out. In Remember Jesus said, you were in jail and you visited me? I was in jail and you didn't visit me? There it is. There's a cross reference to what Jesus told us. And when Jesus spoke those things, he was not speaking about the church. He was speaking to his Hebrews, his brethren. Well, maybe I'm throwing this out. Maybe, maybe this, this is a big fit. But wouldn't it be funny if Jesus wrote Hebrews? I don't know. He's calling them brethren. He says he came unto his own. His own received him not. But that's, that's garbage. Maybe maybe not. I don't know. All right. So verse 35. Oh, in heaven, a better and enduring substance. Jesus said, where your treasures are in heaven, where thieves will not steal. Here they're being stolen. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Alright, so don't give up. Don't lose your patience. You will get a reward. Okay? For ye have need of patience. Alright. 
Let's go to James 1 3. Let's check this out. Let's get the, let's get the context. Like I said, we have to look at scripture. James 1 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Chapter 5. Chapter 5. Verse number 11. 5.11 Behold, we count them happy which endure. Is that church? No. Ye have heard the patience of who? 42 chapters. He is persecuted. He's a man on the ground for seven days. At the end, he sees God in a whirlwind. He gets back his entire family but his wife. Now, let's go to James 1.1 1, 1, if you missed it. Uh, maybe this is a boo-boo cheat you, but James 1.1. 1, 1. Let's get it right. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the... Who are they? Go back one book. Who are they? The 12 tribes. Hebrews. Faith and patience are going to be an important thing in the tribulation period. How important? Guess what chapter 11 is about? Now, find me in chapter 11, one church age person. Go ahead. And do you know what period in Hebrews 11 is missing? You can't find anybody from? The 40 years in the wilderness journey. If you go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea. That's leaving Egypt. As dry land. Remember, that's Egypt. They came out of Egypt. Which the Egyptians assuaged to do were drowned. They got out of Egypt. Verse 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho. Where is the wilderness? There was no faith. Didn't we already read about the wilderness journey? How they lacked the faith and they did not get into the rest? So with scripture, with scripture, get that patience. Learn from the Old Testament. The Old Testament will be preached again in the tribulation as a thing is, it's a road map. Moses is coming. The prophet like in the Moses. You will be taken into Jericho. By who? What did it what is the word that the new Bibles mess with that the King James Bible says has taken them into the promised land? It's not Joshua, is it? What's the Bible say? Jesus. How's that? Scripture with scriptures. Hebrews 10 is for the Jews. They're waiting. For, there will be Jews are going to wait. They may not know it's Jesus unless they read Hebrews. But they know that prophet like unto Moses. So in the book of Revelation, what is sung by the Jews? The song of Moses. When was that song sung? When? Quote, After, yeah, what? quote that um, verse is in Acts 7.45. Acts 7.45? Because it's not in modern Bible. Not even a king. That's even removed in some King James Bibles. When you get a King James Bible, Acts 7.45, check it. If it says, uh, Jesus. If, it's, if it says uh, Jesus. Joshua, it's wrong. It's Jesus that brought them in. So, Scripture with Scripture. So verse 26, you can't get a Christian all upset. I'm, I'm, I've heard that. I've heard, I've heard Christians say 26, but damn. can So you see what the scripture of scriptures. Man, you've got to have Job's patience. Until his three friends show up. And those friends were against him. You better have let us consider one another provoke unto love and do good works. You better hope you have those companions. Don't end up with the companions of Job or he's going to be screaming and angry and all that. And then there was one friend of Job that helped him. And that guy was, I forget his name, Elihu. That guy was interrupted by God himself. Spoke out of a whirlwind. For ye have need of patience. James 1 3, 5 11, then 1 1. That after ye have done the will of God. What's the will of God? Jesus Christ. 
Uh oh. Uh oh. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm saved, right? But look what it says here. Ye might receive the promise. That's not too of a surety, is it? So he. he huh? So. I've done everything I'm supposed to. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, I get, I might receive the promise. <laughs> and you see what the danger is when you go into Hebrews in the church age? There's no might about it. I'm signed, sealed, delivered by Jesus Christ. The only might I have is the, the, the inheritance uh, to reign in the millennium, but that's if I deny Jesus Christ. He'll deny me the what? The right to reign. Well, he's not going to deny me as a child of God because I'm sealed by the Holy Spirit, by the finished work of the gospel that Christ died for my sins, according to the scriptures. He was buried and arose again the third day, according to the scriptures. These people, if you do the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now, let's go to John 16, 16. We're going to go a little overhand, but I think that's okay for this message. John 16, 16. This is before Calvary. Now, what we read in Hebrews, I'll read it again while you go to John 16, 16. For yet a little while he that shall come will come. Jesus is coming and will not tarry. A little while and ye shall not see me. Again, a little while you shall see me, because I go to the Father. Who's that? That's Jesus Christ. He's coming. For sure enough that Jesus Christ is coming for the rapture of the church, more sure also is he coming for the second advent for the Jews. And he has a stated time. What? For yet a little while he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Whatever time that God has for Jesus Christ, He's not going to come too late. He's not going to come too early. We are in the time frame of what God has on his clock. Don't you worry. Now the just shall live by faith. And that shows up in three other places. But if any man draw back, my soul shall not, uh, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. And that could be God or that could be the writer. If, the, if it's the writer, I don't have anything to do with you. You're going to ruin my testimony. And you know, he, you know what the book of Proverbs says? Don't make friends with a fool. Don't be with a foolish man. Don't hang out with a foolish man. A foolish man is the one that will turn on God. And it's warning in Proverbs, don't be around him. I shall have no pleasure. And this is not a Demas. You can't say this is Demas. No, well, Demas went back. Paul said he just went back. He loved the present world. This would be like King Saul. Man, he was right in God in the beginning, but man, he turned. He went to witches. He went to raising dead people from the ground. He went to trying to kill God's people. A type of Satan. Satan was up there with God, Lucifer. And he fell. He turned. God has no pleasure in Lucifer. God will have no pleasure in anybody who has rejected Jesus Christ. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. Oh, that's not a Christian. That's damnation. Those are people who are left and gone into perdition. Verse 26. Verse 29. You see, in the tribulation period, you've got to walk in Christ. And what the devil tries to teach us the charismatics today, you also got to walk in works. You can't say, okay, I believe in Jesus Christ in the, in the tribulation and not go to that temple. You have to. You got to build that battlement around your roof and believe on Jesus. The law is coming back. Not now. For we are not of them who draw back into perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul, and that's not church. Now, you see that faith in verse 38, where the just shall live by faith, look at the next chapter. 
what's it all about. It shows you what faith you need by your Old Testament brother. Now, let's go to Psalms 18. Psalms 18. I don't know if they'll clear it up or make it a little more light. Psalms 18. And let me read to you about someone who's going to be in the tribulation. What they need to do. Psalms 18. Now this is a messianic psalm, but just listen to things here. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Strength in the tribulation. He's the one who got him through. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, deliverer, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The sorrows of death come past me. That's going to be in the tribulation. And the flood of ungodly men made me afraid. Man, there's going to be more people against that Jew. The sorrows of hell come past me about. The, the snares of death prevent prevented me. In my distress I call upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. And my cry came before him, even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundation of the hills moved and were shaken because of his wrath. Second advent. There went up smoke out of his nostrils, fire out of his mouth. The fire coals were kindled by it. Second advent. He bowed the heavens also and came down. Darkness was under his feet. Second advent. He rode upon a cherub. There's that mercy see that's gone and did fly yea he did fly upon the wings of the wind second advent he made darkness his secret place his pavilion round about him was were dark waters and thick clouds in the sky universe at the brightness that was before him his thick cloud passed hailstone and coals of fire the Lord also thundered in the heavens the highest gave his voice hailstones and coals of fire he sent out his arrows and scattered them. He shot out lightnings and discomforted them. And the channels of the wars were seen. The foundations of the world were discovered at that rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of thy breath of thy nostrils. Second advent. He sent from above. He took me and drew me out of many waters. Rapture. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. Hold fast. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also to a large place. He delivered me because he delighted me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. That's not me. My righteousness is Jesus Christ. According to the cleanness of my hands, has he recompensed me? Works. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. Doesn't that sound like Hebrews 10? For all his judgments were before me. I did not put away his statutes from me. I did not walk away from God. I did not sin willfully. I did what God expected me to do. For all his judgments were before me. I did not put away his statutes from me. I did not choose to sin. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. 10, Hebrews 10. Therefore has the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. With the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful. With the upright man thou shalt show thyself upright. With the pure thou shalt show thyself pure. With the forward wickedness thou wilt show thyself forward. For that will save the afflicted people, but will bring down high looks. That's not like the, to me in the tribulation, the, the Hebrews 10, that you've got to do to be saved. And if you don't do, then you're going to willingly not do, and you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Me, there's nothing I can do for salvation. It was settled by Jesus Christ. Only way I can lose my soul if Jesus Christ can undo it and he can't undo it because God said that's the will. 
Jesus Christ cannot go back to Calvary and undo what he did. Well, that's Hebrew dead. 